Rainy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Tell us about the expo and how it came to be. All right. Um, well, I started off with the craft swap of my own, sharing crafts, materials, just trying to keep stuff out of the landfill. And um, Peter and Jan and um, Victoria and s several other people from Transition Palo and Transition Silicon Valley got together and started the garden share. Hmm. And we had this idea that you know we were getting gourds at the craft swap and we were getting some books and tools and things at the garden share that it might be fun to bring the two different groups together. So we did that once or twice where we got that um, and Tom contacted me to come do bike repair. So this slowly started growing and her was he was started off playing flute and playing instruments, guitar um, at the events and he um, he came up with this idea of or he's been doing it a long time of using scrap materials to make sounds and make music. So all of that came together into a sharing event and we're trying to build up to a greater reskilling, the great reskilling that as, as it is known in transition. Um, and so here today we have garden chair, we have someone doing massages uh, who just showed up and started doing them. We have uh, clothes, we have toys, we have books, we have music, and we have crafts, um, and we have a couple demos going on as well. So Is this all free, basically? It's all free. Wow. The idea is to build community, get to know your neighbors, share stories, just like you're doing here, and, um, you know, and have a good time. What happens with the stuff that people may not take and is left? Yeah, um, we try as much as possible to give away the things to you know, places that need them, so books may go to the library or they'll be sold for fundraising for the library. Um, toys will go to a local shelter. Usually the garden produce, you know, it's it'll go to some <laughs> some home in the gardens and uh, and uh, the clothes will go to Goodwill where even torn clothes can be um, recycled and nice. converted into new clothes. So we got, we got everything hopefully covered <laughs> today. And, and How does this compare to how does this compare to a sort of traditional flea market? Um, What's the difference? I guess in the flea market you're exchanging money. Uh, That's one big difference. And um, you tend not to, you know, you don't necessarily know the people that you're coming. You're not there to, to, to meet people. And I'm hoping that people are coming here to, to really kind of get to know each other and make connections and keep meeting these people and sharing. I think we're moving into an economy where we're sharing things one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. rather than on larger scales. So we're, we're trying to localize and build the kind of resilience that we need, you know, in the face of hmm. future <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> and is this something that's less bureaucratic than other organizations? Is it more spontaneous and free in that way? I think so. I, we try to keep it. I mean, pretty much today, Peter and I pulled this together along with, you know, the the demo people's help so um, and everybody else chipped in you know their materials their tables their stuff so it is really a community flat no hierarchy kind of event <laughs> so yeah absolutely okay well thanks for coming thank you so much <laughs> I love it. okay welcome to transition tales oh uh, thank you it's so my name is Tom Cabot and one of my hobbies is bicycle repair. So I come to these events and bring my uh, cargo bike loaded with bike tools, tire pump, and uh, supplies, chain lube and, and rags and things, and then I help people do bike repair and show them how. Now, is this something you do on barter or, or share? Or how, uh, no, how just, that just to... Uh, just to supply the service and teach the know-how, kind of a paying it back, because my friends taught me how to do bike repair when I was a high schooler, and I noticed a lot of folks uh, would enjoy learning it, so I, I try to help out. Bicycling's done a lot for me, so I figure I should do a little bit for bicycling. How do you feel about bike safety in Palo Alto? Is it something that's a concern for most people? Uh, for me, it's fine. I, I wear a helmet when I ride. I obey uh, most of the traffic laws, <laughs> and uh, especially stoplights. Uh, and then I also use a rear view mirror so I can keep an eye on what's going on behind me. Um, and uh, I feel it's fine. 
And are you someone who's concerned about uh, climate change? Are you doing something about that? Oh yeah, I, I am very concerned about climate change. I, I look at the buildup of CO2 in the atmosphere and I don't need to see freaky weather to uh, <laughs> alert me to climate change. I just I just look at where we're going with CO2 concentrations and about crossing tipping points and it gets me very concerned. And I realize that, you know, we're the generation now that has all the information and when people look back in the future they'll look to this generation as the one that had the information there's no more plausible deniability for us <laughs> and so everything we do is going to be uh, representing our legacy so i figure i i better try to start making uh, small change now and try to figure out how to make bigger change thank you sir have a good day all right thanks oh, hold it Okay, go ahead. <laughs> My name is Rebecca Aurora. Uh, I've been coming to the farm share for about a year now. Um, and what should I say about myself? Well, why do, you, why do you come to the share? What's the value you add? What do you do here? For me, it's, it's connecting with other people. It's sharing food, sharing our resources. It's um, connecting really at much more a heart level and um, sharing the abundance that's all around us. Nice. Um, so you said you knew about permaculture? A little bit. Tell, yeah. me, tell me what you know about that. Well, um, let's see. My understanding of permaculture is it's setting up systems of growing food that can sustain themselves on their own. So it's rather than having to put a, a lot of energy in, it's about using energy in its natural form or in the way that it already works. Excellent. <laughs> and how do you see the future? I know that's a vague question, but how do you feel about it? What's coming for you? Well, for me, I get excited when people are talking about not just how to maintain, but how to really harness the natural cycles and the rhythms. Um, so anytime there's discussion or uh, participation, community involvement in that, I, I get really excited. Do you have any uh, large concerns about the next 10 to 12 years, 15 years? I do have a lot of concerns, but I think in being part of something like this, it's about focusing on the solution more than the problem. Well said. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to Transition Tales. Thank you. Why are you here, Terry? Um, my name is Terry Wiss, and I am actually here in order to um, help spread these ideas. Um, I am active with the um, Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Sunnyvale, and uh, we have a sharing circle, and uh, we are trying to do some simplicity um, events and um, participation. Um, so far, really, it's just been sharing circles, and we um, do have a community email, and we do things in that way. Um, so I'm here today basically to sort of see how it's working, see what's working, um, and hopefully import more of those ideas back with me. So I purposely didn't bring anything with me today because I didn't I didn't want to be a participant. I wanted to keep myself focused on um, how things are working. I was afraid if I was an actual participant, I would change my mindset and I would be um, more focused on, on my needs rather than, than how this is actually working and, and the things that actually are working. Tell me a little bit about uh, the fellowship at, at your congregation and, and if if you see sharing as a spiritual process or a spiritual power um, personally I do um, what's her name uh, Cecile Andrews is that her name uh, was here locally and um, had done a couple of different talks and when I heard her I immediately knew it was something that the fellowship 
would appreciate and could get behind and um, that I felt like that that it was a natural community for things like this okay. um, and to me it is an issue of um, part of what you use value are people mm. as opposed to things um, and that that a lot of what my perception of this because I'm not I'm not a, a lead person or, or anything in, in this particular organization, but um, I I see that as very central to this. That it's it's about people, it's about community, it's about um, you know building um, relationships as opposed to things. <laughs> <laughs> nice answer. Okay, Terry. Thanks a lot. And good luck on your quest. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, it hasn't been going very well lately, so <laughs> kind of, we weren't getting people, and I've been kind of busy, so we haven't been holding regular meetings. What is what is the challenge behind getting people together behind Transition Cupertino? What's the issues? I think the main thing is getting getting the, the um, meeting times. When I do meetings, I was having them like at nine o'clock or eight o'clock on. Wednesday mornings would seem to work out well for the first couple weeks, and then people are kind of, you know, school and work and, you know, stuff like that, you know, I gotta get the kids up and going, I have to get the kids to school, you know, so yeah. I'm trying to, right now it's kind of a little bit on a hiatus, but I'm hoping on, you know, trying to do more of a week, maybe a weekend thing at my house, I'm trying to get my house fixed up, and the girls are going scream at me, people. <laughs> What is uh, what are some of the, the issues or needs that you're looking to address? What's going on? A lot of people could kill people who've been attending a meeting are uh, trying to get a transportation system for Cupertino. Oh, really? Tell me more about that. What does it mean? Well, it's trying to it's trying to you know for you know the they're part of several things. One of them is trying to get the you know the dedicated bus lanes and things like that going up and down Stevens Creek because they tried it uh, and uh, El Camino didn't work, one of the cities didn't want it. And so, uh, so they're trying to uh, you know, get that going there along Stevens Creek and, and there and then ones that kind of go through this, throughout the city uh, and to, to limit some of, the, some of the traffic and stuff like that that occur, particularly around the schools. Is there a lot of bikers there? No, I don't really see a lot of bikes. Not like you do like in Palo Alto, you know, everybody lives in Palo Alto and rides a bike, it seems like, you know. You know, particularly people on the same mindset as I am, you know, I am transition. How is the local government being supportive of your goals? Are, are you talking to those guys? I have not talked to the local government much. Uh, we had one guy, Frank, who was part of the Cool Cities, and they're they are trying to, trying to uh, you know, do some things there, particularly about the the uh, cement plant, the yep. quarry, you know, that big hill of slag or something like that, and selenium in the water, that kind of thing, so that's kind of a big mm -hmm. thing trying to get pushed through, and I think that has more to do with the county government than does with the city, you know, yeah. so the county's kind of, you know, doesn't really want to, that's my, my understanding, doesn't really want to, you know, address the issue too much, you know, they're making really, a heat with it the cement, or the quarry which tells you everything's fine, mm -hmm. everything's okie dokie, and, you know, they have a 20 year plan to get out of there, and we'll put it back the way it is, and we'll leave, and, uh, you know, we'll just, <laughs> you know, we'll take that with a grain of salt, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Cupertino is a fairly affluent uh, city. Yes, it is, yeah. A lot of people yeah. work jobs there. Uh -huh. So it, it, is it hard for you to get get your message out about climate change and other stuff to these people who are just making money and going home at night? Um, is it especially hard or no? I don't know. I've never really accepted well, We have a lot of uh, Asian people, so it's kind of hard to get them to find this kind of thing. I mean, it's kind of there for the schools. They like, you know, good schools. So they come in, they raise their families, they move out, and move out. Or Asians, you know what I mean? So it's kind of a stepping stone to get the good good high schools and things like that. So okay. And I haven't really talked to them, talked to them much. That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think that is kind of my challenge. Is that kind of that you know the the cultural type 
stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, because like, like as far as it's like buses and stuff like that, they, my understanding is they would they would want to go to drive their kids to school. So that's what happens. <laughs> you know, so I, I guess they figure it's safer or, you know, I don't, you know, I don't really know the, you know the reasons behind it, but that's my understanding. Okay. So thank you so much for talking to me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Peter, thank you for coming to the Transition Tales booth. Thanks for joining our Sharing and Reskilling Expo. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your focus with the Transition Movement. Um, my focus with Transition is in building community. I think the only way we're going to solve problems like climate change is with an attitude change. That we understand where we live, where what we use and eat comes from, as much of it as possible comes locally. Getting people together, uh, sharing, my focus is food, especially produce, but uh, other things. Today we have crafts and books, clothing. Know where it goes to. It's it's useful life isn't over don't throw it away so know where things come from know who your neighbors are know where it goes to it's not everything we need to do to avoid something like climate change but it's a big part of the problem and it's a necessary change nice thanks have a good event so welcome to transition tales who are you hi i'm anal goodbell where are you from um east palo alto california originally from the island of Tonga. Okay. Do you know um, what transition is about? I don't. Transition is about moving from corporate capitalistic sort of top-down approach to a local self-sufficient self strategy. And so what we're doing here is doing a free event, sharing clothes, sharing uh, books. Yes. Sharing techniques and tools, and this guy over here is making sound for free. So we're trying to we're trying to build a sort of resilience or a new community spirit that isn't based on money, but based on relationships. Got it. So tell me, tell me what's going on in East Palo Alto. Um, to be honest with you, I just moved back after being away for ten years, so I don't know what's going on with the community. Per se, I understand we have a young mayor. Yep. Um, the crime has gone down, and I'm hoping to get into some something community to work with the youth because they're the ones that suffer the most. Um, whether it is they can't um, finish school, the poverty level I think is still great in East Palo Alto. Um, but a lot of people are also moving out, and there are people moving in with the new homes. But it's still basically the same. Hmm. Why did you move back? Um, just life circumstances. Okay. But I'm happy to be back when I thought I didn't want to come back. Hmm. So I'm, I'm excited to get involved with the community and what they're doing there. Especially with the youth. Interesting. Now, Transition Palo Alto is obviously a group that's high affinity to East Palo Alto. Do you know anything about Transition Palo Alto as a group? I don't. I just, just got this stuff? newsletter. I came with a friend. She invited me to come. So I wasn't really familiar with what was going on here, but it sounds very interesting. Great. I, I really welcome you and I hope that uh, you can bring some, some energy to East Palo Alto. Yes. They need it. Everybody does. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Okay. do it as a meditative sort of thing too and I used to call scrap off any music with found sound but now I'm starting to call it um, exploring sound with found objects or that sort of thing because it really is a, a very much about exploring just finding the sound of things yeah the, the exploring is part of the process it's so much and I think it sort of triggers your creative juices you know so, <laughs> so here's another example uh, the ball jar and uh, uh, I just discovered this one the other day, actually. I don't know how I did it. I have no idea what motivated me to do this, or maybe I did it <laughs> for some other reason, but 
you can just do this little kind of. I should have brought a couple of these, but if you get different pitches, right? You can go ding dong ding dong, you know, that sort of thing. Actually, I'll just show you. If you imagine. Should have brought more rubber bands. So there's the different sound. <laughs> and while I've got this, this is your economy tabla. It's uh, an interesting little item. I think you can still get these for probably a couple bucks a piece. These are these ball jars with uh, canning jars with uh, handle on. Uh, and the handle helps because there's just that lovely tone. But then if you do this, this is just water. It's not red wine. It's colored yeah. water. <laughs> Couldn't waste waste the red wine on something. But um, so you can get this sound. Oh, okay. And then if you hold it, you know, every, interestingly enough, even these simple little instruments have their technique. Every instrument has its technique. This one's a little, actually tricky because the idea is to hit the thing and just get your hand off of it as quick as possible. I always say to people, um, imagine you're touching a hot stove or something. Nice. Sort of like water falling into a, a lake, in a sense. Boosh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's an analogy. Yeah, it's an <laughs> auditory analogy, yeah. <laughs> and what's, it's, phys, uh, in terms of the physics of it, you're just basically, you're, this is your resonating surface here, and you're, you're dampening part of it. The same way you would dampen a violin string, really shorten it to make the pitch change. That's kind of what you're doing here, by changing the... So there's a lower pitch, there's a higher pitch. Nice. All right. Well, thanks a lot, sir. All right. Enjoy your concert today. All right. <laughs> thanks. Thank you. All right. Are you kind of with... We live in Cupertino. Yes. He planned all the meetings while I was at work. <laughs> that kind of fizzled out, but I think he's, you're willing to... But you're not recording now, are you? Sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can cut it out. Don't worry okay. about it. Okay. Well, we'd like to be part of Transition Cupertino, but we didn't get many people involved at this time. <laughs> what What is the challenge of getting the folks involved there? I wasn't part of it. I went back to work. It's Dave who was doing it. Oh, okay. So he was trying to find a better time to do it and hopefully get more people. What are some of the issues that you see are important in Cupertino? The local Cupertino? issues. Cupertino? Well, one thing is that there's a law that was passed that prevents people from having bees unless you have a huge uh, yard, which we don't. And so really? that would be a neat initiative to go and uh, change that law. Wow. Were people getting stung or...? I don't know why. I think it was a law back in the 70s, and I called and I said, "What's the law? You know, what's the law?" And they said, "That was the law." So, <laughs> the law? <laughs> yeah, but I haven't had the time to go and uh, work on that. But I think that'd be a great initiative for someone. What about climate change in general? Do you have any fears about that? Do I? Yeah. Um. Sure. Sure. Tell me. Tell me one. You're asking me questions that aren't necessarily my passion, but... Uh, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> uh, tell me my fears. Um, if it's too hot, we won't be able to grow our vegetables in the season that we normally did, and it'll affect our food supply. Yep. You mean you're not going to Safeway for your vegetables? That's our, that is our goal. And one simple goal I'd like to do is to eat only from our yard one day a week. And that's a goal we're trying to reach. But right now we're having a little, even though we're trying to do the bio-intensive gardening, we're learning. And so, but that would be my goal. And the bio-intensive gardening is your passion, I take it? Uh, you know what my passion is? Turning into my grandmother. Becoming a uh, sustain. Uh, learning how to do a lot of skills that uh, were more popular then and what happened was many years ago when I went to see my grandmother I thought she was very odd <laughs> she was taking plastic bags and sewing handles on them oh. she yeah she was she was odd she would take sweaters and unravel them and knit them back <laughs> she actually grew like like weeds in her yard and made sandwiches out of them and I thought she was very strange <laughs> and now you guess who's doing that now <laughs> <laughs> me and so I just 
I just um, I do canning. We do cooking. We're you know right now we're making our own nochino alcohol. We're making our own vinegar. We're making our own. We've got miso. I'm making miso right now. Yummy. I mean that's my passion is to to make these things myself. And are you making them in bulk so you can trade for other stuff with with the miso or vinegar? You trading? That is something I haven't thought about. You know, that would be a great idea. I took a tofu making class two weeks ago. Mm. I'm just very interested in in the doing. I'm interested in the doing. Yeah, you can increase increase your local economy by sharing and trading. Yeah. Yeah. Then you don't have to go to Safeway. Exactly. I would love not to go to Safeway. As a matter of fact, I don't go to Safeway very often. Thank yeah. you for saying right, that. Sure. Thanks, so. All right. Okay, so what is your name? Paul Engstrom. And Paul, what are you doing at the Transition uh, Expo today? What do you got petition today? The petition is to do away with the personhood of uh, corporations and the uh, tremendous amount of money they are spending calling it free speech. We didn't think that's so undemocratic. Mm-hmm. So this is a petition throughout the United States. Many uh, cities have uh, endorsed it already. Los Altos Hills here locally, Mountain View. Nice. Uh, Human Relations Committee of Palo Alto has done it. Um, I'm not sure about Los, a- Los Angeles has it, but I'm not sure about San Jose. Okay. I'm not sure to say. But this is what the petition is. The more signatures we have, the more influence Congress will have to put a bill to amend the First Amendment. They let corporations take care of business, corporation business, but not our politics and interfere. Nice. Who is? And I found a lot of very sympathetic people at the transition uh, <laughs> fair, or what do you call it? To the, the expo. Both. Yeah, kind of uh, both. It's, it's a wonderful idea, and uh, I came here because I thought people that are concerned about transition and uh, civil rights and, and social issues, like transition, would be very, very sympathetic. So I've gotten quite a few, <laughs> quite a few petitions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, a little old tech. Hi, welcome to the Transition Expo, the super sharing people. What can, what can you tell me about yourself? Well, I'm Romy Georgia, and um, I'm a gardener. <laughs> I write a, a monthly newsletter for people that are just getting into, um, or that are, that are experienced at growing fruits and vegetables in their own garden or yard or balcony or whatever they have here in our Palo Alto location. And, wow. And um, I'm on the steering committee of Transition Palo Alto, and I've been working there for the last couple of years. And just a couple of months ago, I had our huge first free sale at our house, where people, um, we cleaned out a lot of stuff and gave it away, and other people brought a few things and carried a lot of things away, and we all had a lot of fun in the process. Hmm. I talked to some folks from uh, Transition Cupertino. Mm -hmm. They're having some tough times getting it up and running. What would you recommend there? for them to get their organization more involved with people. Well, we, we've already been working with them, so so um, all the transition initiatives are uh, um, allied in, in some kind of way. There's Transition Silicon Valley, and um, we do share a lot of a lot of events. We ha- actually have a garden share in Sunnyvale, which is closer to Cupertino. Okay. I'm pretty sure they take part in that. Hmm. And um, it's just really reaching out and having events that are interesting to people and that really, really capture them. We've had, um, for two years, we've been running film series here in Palo Alto on topics of interest like food, land use planning, transportation, community building particularly. I think it all comes down to community building because that's what we're all going to need in the future. It's like a connected community. Exactly. Tell me about permaculture. How do you use it? Well, I'm, I'm not an expert in permaculture at all. We, we do grow um, our, our tiny, tiny little lot at Palo Alto is almost exclusively edibles. So we grow vegetables in the front and I have a mini orchard on the side. So I, I do a lot of intensive 
uh, tree planting techniques where I keep I keep the um, the height short mm -hmm. so that you can reach things. Planting two or three or four trees in a hole, or using espalier to keep um, so you get as much variety as possible in in small areas. So I'm really very very big on <laughs> growing and eating from your own garden. That's uh, there's a lot of permacultural philosophy in what you just said. Is there? Well, the localization, uh -huh. the intensive bio uh, planting. Um, yeah. So you're really more of a permaculturalist than you know. Uh -huh. I'm interested in how these two groups or these two movements intersect and support mm -hmm. each other. Well, I believe that Transition was founded upon permaculture principles by Rob Hopkins in Ireland and then in, then in England. So there's a very, very close ties. You're right. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but that's, you know, that's historical, I guess. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Welcome back to Transition Tales. Please introduce yourself and, and tell me why you're here. Hi, I'm Patricia Becker and I'm the Center Director of Common Ground. And I've been the Center Director for 11 years and I've worked here for 20. And we opened um, Common Ground Center open to the transitions, uh, the, the swap. And now uh, Peter said they want to expand the swap. So I said that's a really good idea and we're happy to host it and participate. And in fact, I'm going to go post it right now on our Facebook page for everyone who's not here to get on over. Are you a fan or practice? of permaculture now? Permaculture? Not exactly. Tell me, tell me more about that. About what? About not exactly. <laughs> well, I live in a studio apartment, so I don't have a lot of land to practice uh, permaculture. Okay. But if I did have a lot of land, I definitely would practice permaculture and the grow by intensive methods that uh, Common Ground um, is based on, really. Uh, our main foundation is teaching people how to grow food using the grow by intensive methods. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, a lot of contaminated soils in this area? Is that an issue for you guys? Uh, not to my knowledge, I don't think it is. Oh, that's uh, wonderful. I, but I think if there is, there's bioremediation. For instance, planting sunflowers will pull up the toxins okay. on that subject. Yeah. And how do you see the future? How do you see the next 10 years? What are your challenges? I see it growing in a, a better and better way. People's consciousness is growing and wanting to do things, connect more locally, affect our local um, economy, our local environment, um, and people connecting like at this gathering um, this morning. What did you bring to share today? You know what? I am having, I'm, um, I'm having a yoga workshop, so I'm bringing a corn and arugula salad, and we're having a potluck here this afternoon with my yoga cola. Yummy. Yoga cube. <laughs> so I actually stopped by to check in on, on the event, see how things are going, and talk with you. Well, thanks so much for coming. <laughs> You're welcome. See you later. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>